Hey guys, today I'm sitting on my floor because I want to show you a couple of different ways of how to assemble and stuff mosaic crochet pillows. So one of the main reasons why I actually use two different panels is because I like doing different colors and sometimes I even do a totally different design on the back. But if you prefer to crochet in the round, you can do that as well so you don't have to use two separate panels. Like for this one, I crocheted this way. And so the seam ends up being, seam ends up being right here. So you can see with a pillow like this, I've added a fur trim on the outside, which actually connects the two panels together. So for one of the examples today, I'm going to be using this pattern right here, and this will be on the back side. And actually for this one, I'm going to show you using some fur yarn trim. And then for a different way of attaching them, we have this new pattern that I just finished. And for that one, we're actually going to seal it up like I normally do around all four sides. So let's head on into my studio and I'll show you how to make these two pillows connected. So the first pillow that we're going to start with is this foliage pattern that I'm not sure if it's going to be released before or after this video comes out, but we're going to start here. This is probably the easiest one to do uh, because you can see we're attaching every single border stitch together. So when you're going to be connecting on all four sides, what you're wanting to do is make sure that they are actually facing together. And then when they're all connected, we can turn it right side out and then stuff it and seal the other side. We're going to start from the bottom right side of your whatever pattern that you have. So this is the very bottom of that one. And then make sure that that is also the bottom because you don't want one side up and one side down. And for this one I'm using the same hook that I used to make this pattern. So this one is an H. Insert your hook into this first border stitch right here. And you see this tail is actually the first chain, so we don't need to worry about that one. What we're gonna be going into is the border stitch right there. So insert your hook into this one. So you'll see the knot on top. And now on this panel, the border stitches, you can see here the holes are actually in between, and that's where you're gonna be putting your hook. So on one panel, it ends up being underneath it, and on the other end, because the border stitches are done a different way on both sides, it's going to be on the side. So this is the first hole that we're going to connect these both. And what we're going to do is take our yarn. I'm going to use the same color as this panel right here. It doesn't really matter what yarn you use. You just don't want to use anything that's really going to stick out in case you do see those edges. So if you like overstuff your pillow, you might see those little things attached. So pick a color that kind of goes with both. That'll be camouflaged. We're going to leave a little bit longer of a tail so we can tie it. So we'll just pull through the whole thing and attach these two together with a knot. And now we'll insert our hook back into that hole where that yarn is right there. And now let's begin adding slip stitches all the way across. So now we're going to pull the yarn through to get the first loop on there and the first border stitch on this panel will be underneath the brown. And on this panel, it's actually before this brown one, so in between orange and brown. So this one kind of goes brown to brown and pull through. And then for the next one, we'll go into this green one underneath the green one. And on this panel, it's next to the orange in that hole. So pull the yarn, pull through, and slip stitch. And I'll show you again. This one will be underneath the brown. And on the next panel, push these aside. It's next to the brown here. Pull 
pull through and pull through. And we are going to be adding slip stitches all the way across and I will meet you at the corner on the other side. One quick thing I wanted to show you is sometimes if you're not super careful keeping the tails in there, you might end up with something like this where it pops through on the front. We don't want that. So just got to make sure that when we're attaching all these together that all of the tails are out. You can kind of see there's that one right there and you just want to pull the tail to make sure they're all on the outside here and then when you turn it inside out it's all nice and clean right there. So now we're at the very end here with the last two border stitches on this side and there's one left on this side. So we're going to connect these two. Go into this first stitch on this side. So we'll turn the whole thing and start working on the top part. So you're going to put your hook into both loops on the very first stitch here and then through this one, which is not a border stitch because it was down here, you're going through these two loops. And then slip stitch through and pull through. And we're going to work this whole row into both loops on the very top, both loops on this side and pull through and then we will continue along the whole top sealing up the top edge. Once you've finished adding all the slip stitches along the top part through both we're going to start adding them on the third side. When you get to this end the holes for the border stitches are actually going to be in between these stitches and then on this panel, it ends up being the holes underneath them. So you're going to put your hook through the green and the brown here. And then on this side, it ends up being this hole down here underneath this first one. And you will slip stitch that way. And it looks a little different because when you're facing them together, they end up being the opposite when you're going to connect them. So it, 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 it seems like it's wrong, but it's actually right. <laughs> Insert your hook between and then through this one underneath. And really the key is where your hook goes in the easiest is probably where it should go. If you're struggling to get it in, you're probably going to want to move it because it might not be in the right spot. So underneath and then through. And we will continue this for the rest of this row. And here we are at the very end of the third side and before we cut anything, we're going to turn it this way. We'll do chain one and tighten it. And then we're going to measure across three times for the opening. Two, three, and then we'll cut. Just pull all the way through. And you can tighten it. And now we're going to put this one aside for a little bit and work on the second one where we will be adding the fur trim. Okay, for this pillow, we're going to add some faux fur yarn all around the edges. And the way we do that is instead of having them sewn on the inside, we're going to actually have the panels facing out so the backs will be together. And of course we're going to start on this side and instead of dealing with any of this we're actually going to be folding them on the inside 
and hiding them there because we're going to be working from the front. So both sides, you're going to want to tuck these in and you can kind of tuck them in as you're going and try to keep them out of the way and on the inside. So these panels I used an H hook and we could use up to, I, I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use a J hook because you can still get the hook into the border stitches without too much of a problem. It's not going to be too, too tight. And although it calls for an M through Q sized hook, we're not going to use that because we will not be able to get that in here. So this one we're going to use a J hook and we'll start the same way we did before on this side. And then we're going to be going through here, but as we're going, we're going to tuck these in. We'll get started under the first border stitch on the other side too. And just like before, leave a little bit of a tail and just pull this through and tie it. And this tail will be weaving in and also hiding. So it doesn't really matter that it's long. And as before, we're gonna go back into that hole on both sides where we just have the yarn. So when you're adding fur, it's going to be a lot thicker. So we're not actually gonna be going through all of the border stitches. We're gonna be going through every other border stitch. And we're also going to be doing double crochet instead of single crochet. So the first thing we're gonna do is chain two. And that'll act as the first one. Okay, and then we're going to yarn over and we're going to be going into, not this one, but this next one here. And then on this side, I know it's gonna be a little hard to see, but we're gonna go under the black stitch here. And double crochet. And do this slowly because it tends to slip off of the hook. So we still have three. And we'll go through two and two. And then we'll yarn over and again, go through this one here, black. And then on this side, find where that black one is over here. And we go under that one. So three, one, two, three, there we go. It is a little trickier. It does have a very cool effect though. Again, yarn over. We went through this one. So we're going to be going into that one. And then look back here, and there's the black one. Two, two. I'm gonna finish this side here, and then I'll meet you at the corner. In this particular pattern, we added an extra row of single crochet stitches to make this a little bit longer, so this last stitch here won't have a black border stitch, it'll be orange. So we will add one more here, and then the same on this side. We're going to go through this last border stitch, which was black. And now usually when you do corners, you want to add extra stitches so you're curving around instead of having it pull like this. Um, but because this yarn is a lot thicker than the hole that we have here, what I like to do is just chain three. And then we will start the top row from this first stitch right here. So into these two and then when you look at the black it's the first one there would want to put three stitches right here but that it's it's going to be very difficult to get three stitches in here since it's pretty tight already with the thicker yarn 
and especially if you're using like fur yarn like this you won't really see this hole it's very camouflage but if it does bother you and you don't want this hole there you can absolutely try and get three stitches in this corner stitch here but it might be a little bit of a headache to do that so this is kind of a little way around that and now we're going to continue and once again we're going to go through every other stitch so we just started with the first one the next one's going to go here into both loops on that side and we're skipping that and going through both loops on this side and I apologize if it's hard to see black yarn is very hard to record so we'll do two and we will continue that all the way to the other corner and we will do the same thing on the corner with the three chains and I will meet you at the end and here we are at the very bottom and we want to add three chains and instead of measuring any of this we're going to actually keep this and not cut it because after we stuff the pillow we are going to continue adding double crochet all the way to this end here so let's head over to the yarn lounge and we will stuff these pillows Hey, so we're back on the floor. Um, I thought this would be the easiest way to show you how to take apart an old pillow or a new pillow and use the stuffing on the inside to fill your new pillows. Of course, you can use uh, pillow inserts if you'd like, uh, but this is, this is what I use because I make so many pillows all the time, I can't afford to keep buying pillow inserts or covering other pillows that I've had, so this is, what, this is my method. All right, now time for the fun part. Let's open this guy up and see what we are working with. All right, so this pillow, this is exactly what I was hoping for, so I can show you. This is like heavy, thick batting, and what you're gonna need to do is instead of just taking out large sections like this and trying to fit this into a pillow, it's gonna end up being way too lumpy and what you need to do is actually tear off pieces of this and before you go into the pillow we need to break all of this up even if you're buying like a brand new package of fiber fill you're going to want to do the same thing you're going to want to rip this up and make sure it's nice and even so when we go into our piece here it's not chunky <laughs> So with this pillow, I've already flipped it inside out, or actually right side out, and we are ready to stuff this one. And we're going to take our fiber fill and go into the corners and work our way over to this corner and lightly stuff it. You don't need to go too hard on this. And we're going to do this in pieces over and over and over until we have it completely full, but not too full. So break it apart and try and even it out as you're going. This way when you're putting it inside, it's kind of grabbing onto the other pieces as well. And we're at a pretty good point here where a little bit is sticking out of the top. It's fairly even around. And you do want a little bit of extra on the top because when you do close up the top here, you'll have some that'll fill into the corners. And the easiest way to and close this, you can try and hold it and sew along this side like this, or you can add safety pins so you don't have to fight with it the whole way. So for this one, I am gonna add a little bit of pins here, and then I'll show you how to close it. So now we have this pillow all stuffed here, and I've added a couple of safety pins to keep it from popping out. And I've also added a darning needle to the end of the yarn that we had reserved and we're going to start adding stitches from one side to the other going through both loops and we will do this the whole way to close up this side of the pillow And 
And then when you get all the way to the end, just tie it off and weave it in a couple of times to hide the tail and you're all done with this pillow. And now for this pillow, I've already gone ahead and stuffed this as well and I added a couple of safety pins to keep the stuffing on the inside while, while we continue to add double crochet stitches in every other stitch all the way across here starting with three chains at the corner and then I will meet you back at this corner. So when you come to the end of the bottom of this pillow all you need to do is add three chains for the corner And then we're gonna connect this bottom with the beginning here into the very top of the first double crochet that we did. And we're gonna connect it with a slip stitch here. And slip stitch this one and chain one and we'll cut and pull through. So now we have the beginning and the end tails here. You could tie these two together. And then we're going to weave these in to hide them. And here we have our two mosaic crochet pillows all done, all sealed up, both reversible and one with a fancy fur trim. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I have plans to put out a few more videos about mosaic crochet and a few other fun projects. Uh, thank you so much.